Never ever have enough time to play at all You know everybody wants to walk in someone else's shoes Everyone's forgotten Welcome back to Otter Creek in Rio Grande. And as you can see, I have created and finished up all of the substructure for frying pan junction. So if you look at the history of Basalt, Colorado, one of the first things that it was called was frying pan junction. And I think it was also called Aspen Junction for a brief period of time, but it never actually got incorporated as a town, I don't believe, until they called it uh, the town of Basalt. So I'm, I'm thinking about going ahead and, and calling it Frying Pan Junction, because it, it's where the Frying Pan River and the Roaring Fork River uh, meet. So everything's looking pretty good. I've got some splice plates here and a splice plate down there and here in the access hatch i haven't done anything yet but where this leaves here that will be spline and you know i did lose a little bit of room inside the access hatch but all in all there's still plenty of room uh, to get off inside there and turn around and do what I need to do and figure out how I'm gonna go ahead and make this whole thing come up in here and figure out if there's gonna be a bridge right here with the fork of the two rivers. You know, if one river comes down this way and they meet somewhere around a bridge right here. I haven't completely decided that. Uh, speaking of water, down here is my river and I, I just need to splice it together. It's, there's three different chunks of plywood there that I've cut away and it's, it's pretty much good the way it is right now. The only thing that I really need to do is undersling some kind of bench work from the bottom side of the plywood at the same length of these joists so that I've got something that supports the river on the bottom side of this, and then I've got two solid places that I can attach my fascia to as it comes around through here. So I'm at a point now where I'm not entirely sure what the next thing I should do is. I've got all of this to consider here because I want three yard tracks that's gonna start somewhere right in here and attach to this plywood there. And I'm not sure if I want to make that, you know, from here down to there, make it plywood. Uh, that might be the easiest thing to do. I think, I, you know, I've got the plywood to do it. I just need to make up my mind on, on whether or not I want to or not. Uh, I haven't messed with any of this down here and you know, none of this is permanent yet. It's just kind of there. And that's primarily because I think I should go ahead and run my, my spline from staging back through here and find out where it's gonna interface so that my support system for this part of frying pan junction doesn't interface and cause problems with where the spline is. So I'm, I'm gonna leave that kind of fluid for the moment. So I'm gonna get started, I guess, you know, doing something and <laughs> you guys will see what I do when I show you.
as you can see, I've got my spline laid back in and everything is, is looking really good right now. Uh, this is kind of a major victory for me if, if you stop and think about it. This area out here, you know, was kind of the biggest challenge in my mind's eye to the whole railroad. Was I gonna be able to fit all this in here, figure out, you know, how I was gonna get from point A to point B? Uh, is my access hatch in the right spot? Uh, all of these things were, in my opinion, a pretty big challenge, especially for someone who's never really built anything other than a eight foot section of model railroad that was, you know, a point to point. So it's coming along nicely. It, it actually deserves a, a victory dance in my opinion, and I may just do that. So the next challenge that I'm up against is going around the backside of where the workbench is gonna be or, or, or getting to the workbench. So this track here that is leaving here is actually going east to Cloud City, which, you know, in, in the prototype that I'm modeling this after would have been Leadville, Colorado. And then this track is going south to, on the prototype, what would have been Aspen, Colorado. So at some point, these two tracks really need to cross over each other because this track is gonna gain elevation and I'm gonna refer to it probably as the High Line because it will, will go to what's directly back behind me, uh, which will be you know, the town of, of Aspen, which I haven't come up with a name for that town yet. The area beneath it, where this track will eventually navigate on its way around the room to Leadville or Cloud City, which will be over there on that wall where those shelving units are. Uh, that area behind me will be called Hellgate. And it will be, I'm thinking somewhere between seven and nine inches below the tracks for this. So I've got to figure out where exactly you're going to cross. On my track plan, I have them crossing right here somewhere. And I don't think that's going to work because on the track plan, I didn't account for the width of the spline. And I think, you know, on paper, it will work. I think in reality, there's just not going to be enough room to cross them with this little bit of run here and whatever run I get from here to there. I think technically there's three inches of difference, but if you add in the width of that spline, it's, it's just not gonna work. So I think they need to cross each other somewhere further back. So all of that being said, I think the next thing I need to do is go ahead and affix whatever it is that I'm going to use to get the spline attached to these two points and start working on the spline going to the bench work over top of the, the workbench. So I think what I need to do next is go ahead and figure out exactly what I'm gonna do with the spline, leaving these two locations going over to where the workbench is and figuring out where they're gonna interface with the bench work that's gonna be on top of the workbench. Now, another thing that I would like to point out about all of this, you know, as I developed the track plan, I shared it, you know, both on YouTube and on a, a model railroad form called the Railwire that I'm a member of. And one of the reoccurring comments about particularly this section of, of the track plan, lots of people pointed out that, you know, if you got rid of that, you could probably get an extra peninsula in there and, and have room for another town and or 
operations, you know, another area that, that added a little more operation, operational value to the model railroad. And, you know, I, in my early track planning, I did look at getting rid of this and, you know, some other things. I, I promise I, I hashed out multiple different ways of how to approach this room and what I wanted. But, you know, there's a couple things that, that stuck with me about what I wanted to do. One is I absolutely wanted a division point railroad, you know, where this town, you know, you've got a south branch and then you've got two different directions you're going there. To me, the operational value of that was really cool, which is really why I wanted it. And of course, the other part is all of the black and white photos available of the area that I thought that would be a great challenge to recreate some of those black and white photos, uh, you know, on the model railroad. I'm, I'm drawn to that for some reason. I just love old turn of the previous century black and white photos. Uh, I just get drawn into the scene and, and really like that. So that was a huge selling point for me. And the other thing that that kind of turned me off about having extra peninsulas, you know, you kind of end up getting forced with your, your main line always running parallel with your workbench. And there's nothing wrong with that at, at all. I'm not trying to knock anyone who does it that way. But what I wanted was something that kind of draws you in. And I feel like that the fact that this is, you know, there's gonna be no point, at least from, from staging to this point, and even over, over top of my, my workbench there, where you feel like you're just walking along beside a long bench. I'm, I'm hoping that the way it, it all feels is that it just kind of draws you in and, and be much more photographic than kind of being tied to having your main line six inches or eight inches away from your fascia at every point on the railroad. And so this is what I've ended up with. Even though, you know, my main line is still gonna be six or eight inches from the fascia, it, it's not gonna be a long straight run until I get to the next loop that takes me around to the other side of the peninsula. And, and that, was, that was by design. Uh, I, I really like the way this has turned out. So it never fails. Anytime you need a support structure system for something and you need a, a joist that, that crosses your, your tabletop, <laughs> it always works out to where it comes out right where you have some tortoise switches that you need. So again, one of the, the beautiful things about l girder design is you can just shift this over and now I can, I can build a support structure for my plywood and not have to worry about it interfering with my tortoises.
been fighting the, the tail end of the yard here and there was a corkscrew in the plywood which made it kind of run downhill to this side. I tried to take as much of that out as I could. And you know, the problem is every time I would do something on this end, you know, you got your up and down also. So I've kind of settled <laughs> and I've got a little bit of a dish right in here that shouldn't cause many problems at all, you know, because for one, I don't think I'll ever need to set a car or a train out here that's not hooked to a locomotive. So it just shouldn't be any issue at all. And you know, with a naked eye, you can't tell that anything's leaning by any means. So uh, on to the next thing. And that is coming up with a plate that's going to transfer from the plywood to the spline. I'm trying to talk myself off of a ledge that has me reconfiguring all of the track up to this point and taking a look at these two switches because something tells me that they probably should cant a little bit this way so I don't have such a severe S curve, you know, coming in or leaving town. And that might affect where my plate needs to be for the transition from the ply to the spline. I really think I've got enough room for error that as long as, as I've got maybe 10 inches of plate underneath, that it won't matter what I do here. So I, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna wrap myself around that axle and continue on working towards getting the spline to the workbench so I can create the bench work. point where some decisions need to be made and I think I mentioned earlier that at some point this track and this track need to cross each other because this track needs to go on the back side at some point by the time it gets over here to the wall and so I'm trying to figure out exactly how that's going to work and what kind of structure I need to build to support the risers for the spline. So what I want to do is I want to create something very similar to this. It just needs to be higher in the air. So I think because this track eventually will need to be the highest level track. So whatever height I can gain from here to where it's gonna cross over here at the workbench, I'm gonna try and get that first. And then this track really doesn't need to gain any layout height to speak of. I would be perfectly content with this eventually coming out at you know somewhere between 53 and 55 inches. The time saver, as I recall, is at 53 inches. And I, I certainly don't really want it any higher than that. So I could actually, from here, coming this way, I could go downgrade. You know, so I, I think that's what I'm gonna attempt, is gain as much grade as I can with this track 
and then see if I go downgrade 2% until at whatever point they cross each other and then see how that's gonna affect where the bench work needs to be over the workbench. Uh, that was a lot of information, so <laughs> I think the first thing I need to do is figure out what's going on in here to support the risers. So I've been fighting with this spline here, and you can see I've got it going around, and I think, I'm gonna move the camera a little bit. If I go straight this way with the spline that's associated with this end of, of the yard, I think I'll be able to sneak in underneath that. And then that spline will then come on the outside here somewhere and be lower than this spline. So that's what I'm looking at. Uh, I'll go ahead and take you to the other side so you can see what I got going there. So all of this is still under development. I'm pretty close. Anytime I use one of these clamps and you clamp it to something, it, it distorts it. So I think by the time I get my risers figured out in here, uh, this will not have that kind of strange straight section there. It should be nice one continuous loop. Now, where this track, I've got plenty of clearance underneath this one by four here, but as it goes over or goes under here, I've got uh, just barely two inches there. And I think by the time you put the cork and the rail on there, I won't have room. So this one by four will get cut and there'll be a gap between here and there where that spline goes through. You can see it a little bit better here that, you know, somewhere in between here and here, that one by four will get removed. And then once I figure out where the spline coming this way, once I figure out where that loop is, I will figure out exactly where the support structure for this will be. Because all of this, you know, is still under development. And, you know, I plan on cutting away anything I don't need. So, and I will need another leg or two in here as well, because this is pretty flimsy. But that's where I'm at now. It's uh, late Sunday evening. I need to do some mowing before it gets completely dark. Hopefully it's cooled off a little bit, but I'm going to get started doing that and work some more tomorrow on Monday.